Hey guys, Clay here from Hamjack Down. Hey, today uh, we're just going real light here. Uh, we're working on a video uh, expanding on some of my uh, designs for the HT and portable uh, sling pack. Um, we've had some good input on the since the last video, and uh, I packed everything up today in a different pack here. I got my Camelback uh, backpack here, and uh, I have the solar system, uh, solar panel, and stuff in here. The charge controller. And then I also have all the HD gear that I had in the antenna pouch. And uh, we're all here in the kettles today. Uh, this is just the parking lot here, but this is uh, the access point to uh, shelter number five. We do have some fall colors coming in, which is great. This is one of my favorite times of the year. So uh, we're gonna throw this on and uh, head down to uh, shelter number five, get set up and uh, run through some stuff. Hey guys, thought I'd just kind of throw this in there. Um, I was packing up my stuff for today. Uh, I was going to go out and do some uh, HD stuff and uh, maybe bring some of the other stuff uh, that I had that I wanted to do some reviews on. But as I was uh, packing through some of these things, uh, getting things together, uh, I was putting my water uh, together and uh, I typically don't do uh, you know stuff like this with water and food and you know suggesting stuff, but uh, this is important. Um, when I my, the water that I use, uh, everything uh, gets distilled. Um, I picked up a unit uh, off of Amazon probably a couple years ago, and uh, it's been working out really well, and I just wanted to point a few things out. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of show you what I have here. So this here is, it's called a Mega Home water distiller. What I run with the distilled water is a Kalima salt, and or like some trace mineral drops. I started uh, going away, doing away with the trace mineral drops. Uh, you know, it kind of balances out the pH from the distilled water, but let me just show you guys here what is coming out of our water. Now this is three months worth of, I'm, I'm not even gonna begin to tell you what, what my thoughts are uh, as far as what's in here, but this stuff is like, You can hear that. It's like hard as a rock. It kind of reminds me of like a kidney stone. I've had them and they suck. Let me just show you what's in this guy here as well. So the top comes off of this thing. You fill it up with water and uh, this is kind of what's in the bottom of this thing. So I scrape that out, you know, I clean the unit maybe once a month, uh, but this stuff accumulates. This is like not even a week's worth of sludge on the bottom of this thing. This is here uh, shows how many parts per million uh, of particles that are in the water. Um, after you distill it, there's zero. Um, I've noticed with bottled water, you know, different tap waters, there's always stuff that's added or you know that's you know in the water. But my preferred method is to run this uh, mega home distiller. Uh, so you fill it up with water, and then the top portion here this heats up and. It just kind of just takes off the condensation from being heated up, kind of like a just like a like a still. Um, and then there's a charcoal filter here before it gets deposited into this really nice glass uh, container. But just wanted to throw it out there, you guys. I didn't want to spend a lot of time with it, but I think it's important. Um, in one of my uh, preparedness videos, uh, the MCOM Essentials, I kind of went over the value of water. Um, I also run these platypus containers you know I fill these up I'm going out you know for probably for about four or five hours and uh, you know I always bring like a liter of water with me um, and these are really nice to pack up um, I had a video on these I'll link uh, leave some links in the description uh, for the stuff here that I'm running and uh, yeah I just think you know water is extremely important um, these platypus containers you know you can fill those up with water and throw some tablets in them or you can run like a can of provisions uh, system, but yeah, it's always nice to have uh, a way to contain water, uh, you know, when you're going out and, you know, hydrating yourself. So, all right, so I just thought it'd be important to, you know, kind of share that and, uh, you know, how I pack my water up and uh, get ready for, you know, the trips that I go on. Uh, I'll leave some links in the description and, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts. Uh, you know, I just think water is way undervalued and uh, as far as the quality of it. So, let me know your thoughts. I'll leave some links and uh, I'm going to get packing up here and get ready to head out.
All right, guys, we're just getting uh, to our destination here. Shelter number five in the Kettle Marine State Forest here. Looks like they got a little fire pit set up. Somebody's been out here. This is the shelter. Give you a quick sneak peek of this thing here. Might be a little dark, but they just have a couple windows on each side, some benches, gravel floor. Just a cool little place to hang out and set up some radio gear and command portable operation center. All right, so a couple different thoughts here. Uh, I know shelter number five here, there's you know, a bunch of trees we can set up and stuff. Uh, but I think I might pick out one of these higher ridges up here. Um, the shelter, it's kind of like in the middle of a, you know, a, a low area and there's a ton of kettles that are you know, quite a bit higher uh, surrounding it. So these kettles don't look very big in the picture or in the videos. Definitely doesn't do it justice, but I'll put the top here. There's a small lake or a little reservoir down there. And then I'll show you over here. You can kind of see the shelter down there off in the distance. So I'm going to get a antenna put up in one of these trees and see what we can tap into. All right, you guys, so I have the uh, end of the throw line right here, the retractable part, and that is going up to this first branch right there. I have the Ed Fong antenna, might be hard to see. And then uh, the coaxial cable coming down. This is 25 feet that gets me to this little tree right here. I'm just going to park it underneath there with my backpack and uh, get the radio hooked up. So I just got the radio hooked up. I'm going to try running 0.5 watts to the local repeater here. KC9 TMU, Kilo, Charlie 9, Tango, Mike Uniform uh, requesting a radio check. This is Kilo, Charlie 9, Tango, Mike Uniform. Uh, is anyone available for a, a radio check? I think I had uh, some guys doubling up there. Uh, can you come back again? Kilo Charlie 9, Tango Mike Uniform. November 9er, India Lima Whiskey, Tom and Hudson. Roger that. Thanks for coming back. Hey, I got a, a Ed Fong antenna, probably about 25 feet up in a tree here with a 25 feet of coax running a VX6R on 0.5 watts. I'm out in the Kettle Marine near Greenbush. I'm running the WECOM repeater. I think it's probably, I don't know, 10 miles away from me. Just wanted to check and see if I was making the repeater well. Um, yeah, Kettle Marine, the WECOM network. So. Uh, I've got you up here in Hudson, Wisconsin, near Minneapolis, St. Paul. Roger that. I know the uh, WECOM system was down for a bit, but it's nice to have it up and running again. Uh, Hudson, that's uh, where's that in location uh, to Sheboygan? The Kilo 9 Tango Delta Hotel here to uh, in uh, Merrill, Wisconsin. Roger that. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming back from Merrill uh, out here in the Kettle Marine National Forest, uh, testing out some uh, equipment here today. All right. So the Wecom repeaters linked up again. I know that they were having issues with that a while back, and uh, uh, this Wecom repeater system goes all throughout uh, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan. I think uh, parts of. Uh, Minnesota as well, uh, if I recall. Um, it might just be Wisconsin, um, but I know I've heard people from all over, so it's nice to have it linked again, uh, statewide communications over in HT here. All right, guys, uh, so I just made two contacts uh, from Port Washington, Wisconsin, which is, uh, as the crow flies, roughly 40 miles away. So 
running the VX6R hot on 5 watts. I have 25 feet of RG316 hooked up to the Ed Fong roll-up J-pole, uh, and that's realistically probably about 25, 30 feet in the air. All right, guys, so I haven't packed it up yet. Uh, I got into another repeater about 50 or 60 miles from here, uh, which is the Washington County Aries uh, Racy's uh, repeater. Um, I did pretty well there getting into that, 90% uh, of it was legible, uh, running 5 watts uh, with the BX6R here out in the kettles. So I'm going to put that in the log, uh, that's a good, really good contact for me to have for out here uh, for APRS stuff. So I'm officially going to pack it up here and uh, head back to the truck. I got some other gear and some other things I want to get done yet today. So. I'm going to say 7.3 for now, and uh, it's fun just getting out and uh, doing the 2-meter stuff, uh, seeing what repeaters you can hit uh, with some of the man portable stuff here. And, uh, yeah, just get out there and uh, see what you can do and uh, keep, a, keep a log of uh, your best repeaters and contacts uh, so that you can keep a nice little network going. So, Casey 19 of you, 7.3.